Hello, my name is Mark Anthony DuBose Jr. And I was born July 4th, 1986. I want to say, thanks for being here. Hopefully I can say something to inspire you to want to get up and do something with your dog, because I don't know what it is that the more I talk about dogs, the more I think about dogs, the more I keep on working with dogs, like I want to keep on working with more dogs. And the more I work with other people's dogs, it makes me want to work with my dogs. The more I stand here and talk about working with dogs, it makes me want to just do more with mine. And it's just a absolutely a amazing thing when you start to realize how to have a, a good relationship with your dog, as opposed to one that is just, we don't, we don't know what's going on here. So today, I want to talk about something that has been been, been, been on my mind a lot because I've been doing a lot of different things this past couple of weeks that have been changing up what I normally do when I try to help people with their dogs. That I, I came into the, a situation recently that this dog is crazy. I don't want to say crazy, but this dog is crazy. It would see people, it would see dogs, especially of the dogs, and it would just flip out. It would just flip out. I mean, literally to the point of flipping out, just spinning, barking, extreme. I extreme. I've seen extreme, but this is like a little above that extreme that I think I've ever seen before. And I wonder how many of y'all got a dog like that? That the dog is just, it's like, what the heck? And it's, it's not going away. You're standing there and trying to ignore it, and it's just not going away. You're standing there trying to give it leech pressure, and it's not going away. That's something that I'm going to say is an unfortunate thing that I was trying everything I could to get this dog to, to get out of this. And I went to the, the, the leech not just pressure, but correction to try to, I need to correct this dog to get this out of this dog. And for most cases, most all, I'm able to do that after I explain to the dog what I'm looking for. But this specific dog was like, no, it wasn't, it wasn't doing anything. And in reality, it was amplifying the dog even more. It was like getting the dog to just like, really just get more, more just flipping out, man. Literally, I've never seen a dog actually do the flips before. And this is, this one right here was doing some flipping and it was barking, it was lunging, it was growling. It was just, it, it's excessive. And there's something that, that I, I, I changed up a little bit what I was doing. And I tried to figure out more of why is this dog doing this? Cause at first I was thinking, or oh, 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 you're good. I was thinking, uh, Johnny, okay. I was thinking, uh, uh, the dog is doing this because you know, it's, it's thinking that we as a human, is asking it to do it. So I'm always going through what's going on here. What's happening? Why, 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 why? Because if I don't know why, then I'm not going to get past this. And then I, and then I started just, just troubleshoot every little thing. And then I, I never really got it in my brain of looking at the first thing that I'm going to start looking at in every single dog from now on. Is that dog not getting what it's needing in its said positive way of living? Whereas like my Border Collie, the reason he's pretty all right, he's not perfect, he's not the best of the best, but he, he does really, really good with what I ask for him to do. If not the first or second word, at least a third or the fourth word, at least he'll listen to me. I'm not really hardcore about it being, you better do it, I'm just whatever. But I do know one thing about him on why he's a pretty nice dog, because he gets to do what he likes to do, which is chase the chickens, chase the cows, chase the donkey, chase other dogs, chase, the, chase, chase, chase stuff, move stuff. He likes to, he doesn't really chase it, but he likes to just run up on it and tell it where to go. And I let him do that with a whole lot of times, a whole lot of opportunities, pretty much a lot of the day. He gets to just be able to experience that on his own. And he's, he's so soft with the chicks today that I don't care if he even does it behind my back because he just, when there's two dogs doing it, I can't have that because then they start to, to get on the chicken. I don't want them to put mouth on it. But when it's just him doing what he's doing, he's just, he's just moving them around. And he moves them around, then he gets bored with one, and then he's like, okay, let me just get another one, and he just moves it around. And he gets a chance to be able to do what's positive in his world that he wants to do. And that's something that is, is powerful to him. And the same where I'm gonna say with my Dalmatian and my Shepherd now. They really like to go on these walks and sniff and, and search and just, just be on a mission and just looking at stuff, and, and I give that to them hours every single day. And I realize, like, they're, they're pretty nice dogs. And then I realize my big Shepherd man, Johnny, in reality, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to lie. I don't know what exactly satisfies this dog more than just laying in the house and laying down and relaxing. This dude looks the happiest can be when he's just in the house. When he's out here chasing the chickens, he's, he, he, to my opinion, what I see, he's, he's a little stressed. And that's why I think that he actually goes in and bites him a little bit more than he, especially a chicken. You don't need to chew on no chicken. But he, he, he gets a little a mouthy with him that he shouldn't be. So, so to me, that's just stress. Like he, he, he's doing it, but he's not, say, as happy as my border collie is. He's, he's excited. Like, I love this. He's just doing it as a, being a follower. But he just loves to just lay down in the house and just, just sleep, man. You see that dog just laying down, you're like, that's a good boy. He just, and he'll look up like, yeah, okay, we good. Like, that's just, that's, that's, just, that's just jam, man. And then for each of these dogs, I'm like trying to figure out what's going on here. And I'm looking at it in the, in the sense of what the dog wants. Me giving them treats, me doing play sessions, me doing all this stuff. If I'm not playing the game that that dog sees as positive, I'm going nowhere. So with this dog, I, I had to take it way steps back and start to do something that just 
just I've, I've been thinking about that, that someone else has put into my brain to really get me to think about. And that's uh, uh, giving a, a game to that dog that that dog needs. And maybe that would stop that dog from doing what it's doing. So it's like uh, this pity looks mixed mix looking dog. It's super pretty. It's got these big, huge ears. And I'm just fascinated with this dog, with how intense she is, with wanna just go savage mode over every dog. Go savage mode over balls, over savage mode over anything moving. There's a duck, there's, there's anything. This dog, a squirrel, uh, he, she even looks at little birds like cardinals and, and chickadees and everything. She is just savage. And I'm like, this dog has an excessive amount of prey drive. And there's no amount of, say, corrections I can give this dog. There's no amount of, say, treats I can give this dog. There's no amount of praise I can give this dog. There's no amount of just waiting and hoping it gets better one day for this dog. So there's something else that I have to do here. And it's something else is the, uh, the root cause of why this specific dog is doing this. Not because she thinks that she's protecting us or guarding us, not because of any of that, but because she has this huge desire of prey drive in her that she's never been able to get released out. So every single time she gets the opportunity to be able to activate that, she just f completely f malfunction, malfunction, air malfunction, shut down, broke. There's no communication. There's nothing going on. And I'm saying stuff like a half mile away she would see. She would see a bird flying and it would just get just, just, just insane. So what did I do? You know, being a dog trainer, there's some of my job that I really, really like. And one of that part of my job that I really, really like is playing with dogs. And if you don't like playing with dogs, then you definitely probably shouldn't be working with dogs. But uh, this is something that just, just, just really, I don't know what it is, but especially just doing certain types of play that I know that the dog enjoys, which is I gave him my flirt pole. I had my big, nice, big, long flirt pole and my, my dead squirrel at the end of it. It's a fake one, it's not a real one. I'd like to be able to get real ones one day. But, uh, uh, and I just started playing with this dog. And I worked this dog, and I worked this dog, and I worked this, worked her, worked her, worked her to the point that she's stumbling. She just lays down and she's like, okay, I'm done. And she had it in her that even though she was dead, I could see that her, her everything was gone. She just got up and was like, I want to try again. And then 10 seconds, just lay down. I'm going to do it again and lay down because she had nothing in her. I, I worked her to the point that she just, she just had nothing. And she, her own self, was willing to just keep going. She would go run off, take some drink, come back and just get back in it. And she just never had this opportunity to express that prey drive that was behind her. And I just saw what I'm going to see is magical miracle looking stuff that just happened a week later. Because I told him, let's keep doing this for every single day. I said, give her a break after today because tomorrow she's going to be sore. I, I worked this dog for at, about an hour. We were just running. We were getting, we were having a good old time. Man, it's, it's, it's amazing to be able to get paid <laughs> to do such a thing with the dog. But it's also better to see that you're getting the results that you're looking for from the dog. Because at first, I wasn't. At first, things were better. Things were all right. Things were just mediocre. But I just don't work that way because I want to figure out what the heck's going on. Because if we don't keep up with this, this said strict regiment that I'm working on here, then the dog's going to slip. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to stumble and fumble. So what I ended up doing with that dog is I took that dog to, put it in human terms, I took it to Disney World for the first time. And I let her go on all the rides. We, we went all rides. We, we did a four-day, five-day trip, and we did every single ride there. So we got the whole total full experience to the point that we kind of tired now. Like, I'm tired. Like, I don't even want to go on them same rides again. And then the next day, we went on those rides again. Then the next day, we did it again. Then the next day, did it again. And then the next day, it's just like, you know, I don't need to, to do all of them. I just, like to, I just like to go to the ones that I mainly particularly like. So each day, the first day takes an hour, the second day is less, then less, then less, then less, then less. Because the, the, the drive is, already, is being satisfied. And once the drive starts to get satisfied, the going for walks outside starts to just be a breeze. Seeing other dogs starts to just be like, huh, there's a dog. Because she's been able to get that, that extra excess drive out of her. And, and that's something that is, is very, very fascinating. Because it's something that I think a lot of us skip up on when we're looking at our dogs that we're thinking about we want to play with them, but we got to make sure that we're playing with them in the way that they desire, that they like, that, they, that they're all about, not what we're all about. And in reality, that's kind of unfortunate because at first I'm going to say that it, it's that way. And then later on, we could switch it to being something else. But when the dog is in this like psychotic looking sense of doing what it's doing, it needs to have its, it needs to release that. Because it's holding it in, it's holding it in, and it's holding it in, and it's holding it in. And it never gets an opportunity to be able to just release all that's inside of it. And once you're able to release all that's inside of it, then you're able to finally see the, the dog that's basically what I could say is not an addict. 
It's gotten all of it out. It's got it out. It's been able to express itself, able to just, just release it all and just be able to, to just calm down. It's just, whoo, thank you. Like, I got that over with. Like, I never knew what it would feel like, but I, I finally got an opportunity to just go all out with it. No limitations, no rules, but just, just went crazy. I went dog mode on it. And the dog just, just calmed down. And then I'm just seeing this dog just transform into being what I'm going to say is a, a regular oh, good dog. Not a dog that is just suppressing all of this, this anxiousness, all this anxiety, all this pressure, all this fear, all this everything. Because it's, it's, it's not sure. Because it would go out for a walk and then it would, it would look at Squirrel and be like, I'm going to go to Squirrel. And then we're telling it, no, don't do that. And the dog's like, oh man, oh man. So it was, we're giving conflicting situation going on here with this dog. Conflicting language. Well, we're like, I want to do this, but then no, don't do that. I want to do this, but no, don't do that. We we're going back and forth. And that started to confuse the dog to make it. So that's where things would look, say, in reality, start getting worse looking. That's where if you try to correct the dog, it got worse. Because the dog's like, I'm going and I don't care. Because it's, it's what's inside of the dog that it has to do. And, and, and I've seen this with other dogs, but I never really would think about like what's the different steps. But I, I've seen it in a way that the dogs, do, you can, there's no amount of pressure you can put on some dogs to get them to stop doing something that it is that they're doing. There's no amount of pressure. There's no amount of, of language of, of, I mean, there's no amount of choking a dog out. There's no amount of doing none of this to get the dog to stop. But the dog is in it because we're not fixing what's going on with the dog and why the dog is doing that. And that's something that we, we really should think more and more and more about when we're looking at our dogs, especially if they're flipping out on leash at every little thing outside. And you're going to, I'm trying this, I'm trying this, I'm trying this, I'm trying this. And none of this is working. I'm trying this, I'm trying this, I'm trying this, and none of this is working. And start to think about what is the thing that my dog really likes doing. Because in reality, I started noticing, this is where I just had to have a, had a switch at this because I took her to the dog park on the outside and I saw her barking and lunging at dogs. And when you would see her, she was as happy as all hell could be. She was so excited. She was just like in, in love with what it is that she was doing. Where most all dogs I see, they, they're stressed in that situation. They're, they're actually looking like, please, I don't wanna do this, but they're doing it. So then when I tell them not to do it, they're like, okay, I'm cool, let's just hang out. But I finally saw one that it was just like, she would bark at a dog and be like, yeah, I did it, I did it. And caring nothing about who was behind her on leash. But when it was just me and her, she didn't do it. She, she had no desire to do it. So that's where I was thinking like, oh, maybe it's the owner and maybe it's that. And then I ran into my, I'm gonna say first situation that I realized like this dog wasn't doing it for or because of the owner, it was doing it for itself. And itself was gonna to continue to keep doing it because the only reason that it stopped doing it with said me is because I was telling it not to do that here, but we'll do it over there instead. So I was giving that dog that outlet. I would stand there, would give her, say, you're not doing it here. Then I'd walk away and say, oh, you can look at the squirrels and you can jump and do what you do. And then I'll bring her back. And that's something that I'm gonna say is, that goes down to the part of the dog training that I don't like is management, management and control that I don't wanna to have to keep playing these trickery games to try to figure out how to be able to get my dog to be good in, in, a, in, a, public, in a public place. I wanna be able to just have my dog hang out with me and know that my dog is good without the, 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 this games going on here where I gotta have this huge uh, break session with training and playing and doing all this. I, I, I just wanna, I don't, I don't like that. I'm not, I'm not about that. And I ran into the first time that I was like, I, I, I'm, he I'm headed down the route that everyone is gonna to continue to keep saying to these people about this dog. That you're gonna to have to do this and do this and do this and this dog can't be in public. And I'm like, no, that's just, that. there's no way. So I, I, I had to relook at some things and say, hey, what the heck is going on here? And, and it's something that I, I think a lot of us should really, really think hard about with our dogs, with what's going on, with that they see as being something that they wanna do and let them be able to do it and see and watch that you're gonna notice that every single time that you let them do it, that it's gonna become just, normal it's just going to be all right like the first time i, I had my border collie as a puppy and he's out here ch he was just chasing 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 and then now today he's more seasoned of doing it for more years that it's no longer like this this crazy super super fun thing he'll still get engaged he'll still get drooling sometimes when he's like really stalking and staring at some animals but not to the point that it's obsessive like the first time that he was able to do it that he started to just be able to to to, to pay more attention to what's going on be more focused more dialed in with realizing what he's doing but at first it was just, it's, it's, like, it's like we have zero communication. 
That's something I can say with a lot of dogs that are that chase chickens and do that because it's it's just it's just a huge thing for them. They're like, oh my goodness, this is absolutely amazing. This is the greatest thing. I'm doing what I want. I want to chase this chicken. I want to chew on this chicken. I want to eat this chicken. I want to get this chicken. And then you let them do it a few times, and then the dog's just like, oh, okay, it's not it's not so much anymore. And that's the thing that again, if you got to you're trying to figure out how to get your dogs to stop chasing and eating your chickens, unfortunately, I'm going to say the fastest easiest way is they got to get one so that you can get on them while it's in its mouth, so that you can correct them while they're in the act of. You can't just wait for it later. You have to, you have to set them in that scenario to let them do it. Let them get it out so that they finally get it out. Because someone's going to say to me, oh, that's the opposite approach of what everything has to say. If they do it once, they're going to want to continue to keep doing it. But you can come on my property and I can show you how do you can convince your dogs not to do such a thing because I've got my, Dal my Dalmatian. The, the, the ad on hers was a house with no chickens. And I'm like, buddy, I got hundreds out here. Because why? She kills them. She chases them and kills them. But she doesn't kill any of mine anymore. Because I caught her in the act of doing, and then she stopped doing. And that's the, the main thing that a lot of us really need to just get out of our dogs. Is just let them do what they have to do. And then you can bring it back to say, okay, that we're, we're done with that now. And that's the concept of playing the dogs, letting the dogs run, letting the dogs chase, letting the dogs have their, their, their time of doing what it is that they, they desire to do. So that it just becomes nothingness. It just becomes normal. It just becomes every day. Because when they're holding it in and holding it in and holding it in, and we're constantly every single day telling them no, 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 we're saying no to the dog to do what the dog was created, born, made, bred to do. And then we're saying no, 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 no. And it's something that I can say, like for human beings, we're, we're create, we're here, we're, we're super similar in a way, like how dogs are, but they don't need the same as what we as humans are. But we as humans primarily need other people. We we can't just be solo in the mountains and just live, because even those people they start to they start to have issues. It's 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 not something that we can do for our entire lifetime. Well, for one, we need a, a mother to be able to to get us to a point that we can get out and be able to live on this planet. But uh, we, we are constantly needing to be around people. And it's to say to that person, no, you, you, you can't do that. And then fi force them and force them and force them away, force them away, force them away. You're going to start having just, just this huge buildup that's just going to start to go crazy. And then that person finally starts, <laughs> starts talking and starts doing stuff, starts being around people. And it's just going to be obsessive. It's going to be just insane. But if we just allow them to have that and be able to do it, and, and then every day it's just a normal, it's just an absolutely normal experience. That's something that, that, that I, I, I just keep seeing in a lot of dogs. And then again, for me, I've just realized for, for most of my dogs that I don't see issues because I have them do what it is that they have it in their minds that they want to do. I literally would just put, this is how I get my dogs. The first time I get a dog and even a random dog. And even when I work with other people's dogs, I put dog on a leash, I stand outside, I'm like, what I say, I even say it aloud. What do you want to do? And I wait. And then I see where they go. They always pull me to somewhere to do something. So if the dog is pulling, I'm like, where are you pulling me to? What, what do you want to check out? Because each dog is different. Some dog wants to, to smell every single spot that another dog has peed. Some dogs want to smell every single spot that uh, another, uh, like not dogs, but other animals have been. Some dogs want to just, just go and chase, a, a look and look, scan and search for birds, for squirrels, for skunks, for raccoons. Some dog, every dog has its thing. I just stand there. I just literally at first let it drag me. Drag me to where you want to go. And then they stop. They're, they're doing it. They're like, okay, drag me to the next one. What do you want to do? And then once I figure out what you want to do, now I can go ahead and bring it back to, to get you to understand what it is that I would like to do with you so that we could do this together so that you can calm down with this obsessiveness that's, that's happening. And this is one of the first dogs that I got that the first time I take her outside, what do you want to do? She's like, I'm going back in the house. She had no desire to be outside because she was so shut down in a way of not being able to express her dogness. And she says, I know you're not going to let me do what I want to do anyways, so let's just go in the house because you're just going to make me mad. And that's all this dog wants to do. So every time I'll take her outside for the first walk, she's terrified, terrified of the world. So scared, so scared, so scared. Didn't want to smell anything, didn't want to pee on anything, didn't want to go anywhere, didn't want to walk on a leash, just wanted to stand and run back into the house. That's all that this dog cared about. So I'm like, okay, we got to build that dog's confidence up to let it know we can do something here. And then once you build the dog's confidence up, now it's starting to flip out at everything, at ev <laughs> just everything. And I, wonder, I, I know many of y'all got these dogs that are just flipping out at everything. And, and there's something about that I'm, I'm looking more into the drives of the dogs as to what even the dog is desiring that it's not getting. It's not getting a chance to be able to express its dogness. 
that we're, 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 we're trying to shut it all down and we're trying to give it something that we think is what's positive to it and we're just suppressing and just shutting the dog down. And we need to be able to allow the dogs to be able to just be dogs for once. And once the dog is able to be a dog for once, they start to just calm and relax so much down. They just start to chill out. They just start to just be, be, be what it is that you're looking for. And, and that is to figure out what is that dog. And, and again, this is something that I'm, I'm gonna continue to keep on looking at a little bit more, but it's something that I'm just seeing that once I am able to allow that dog to do what that dog wants to do at first, I no longer have to worry about that part of it anymore. I can, in reality, almost switch this dog's job role at this moment because I allowed the dog to be able to be a dog because they're just holding it all in. And I think that's a huge thing with my Johnny here, that that's what he was all about. He went out, he was chasing, <laughs> this dude chased everything. He's chasing a donkey and he got kicked by the donkey. He got kicked by the cows. He gets kicked by the smallest cow because he's not tough enough. He's not good enough to be able to move him. So the baby comes out and starts pushing, putting pressure on him. The bull don't even move to that dude. But he went out, he just went crazy, just insane. He would see the chickens and just, just chase him to the death and munching on them. <laughs> this, this dude was so funny, I would just catch him. He would be running around. He wouldn't kill the chickens, but he would just have a thing in his mouth and just running around with it. And he would drop it and like, oh, that one's okay. Let me go get another one and do it. Because once he has it in his mouth, it don't really run that fast anymore. And he, he got them long legs to go get. And he just did that at first. And then once he got all of that out of him, he just relaxed. He just chilled out. He just, he just completely chilled out. He just, he just completely just said, you know what, I'm good. I just want to sleep. I just want to, I just want to hang out. But, but he had to do that at first to just get that, that dogness out of him. And again, I don't want you to set this up and come into my farm and thinking that you're going to have your dog come out here and chase my chicks all day. But because it's my stuff, you got your stuff to do that with and do it. But we have inanimate, inanimate objects today to be able to replicate that same thing. Because I was even surprised that my border collie would play with that flirt pole, knowing that he only chases animals. He's never played with toys with me. But moving that thing and whipping it around, it really got him engaged. It got him to be able to get that out of him. And the main thing is get it, just, just push him. Push him hard, man. Push him hard. Let him get it all out. Let him just, just, just be a dog and allow the dog to be a dog. The dog's going to show teeth. The dog's going to growl. The dog's going to bark. The dog's going to do all this stuff. The dog has to be a dog to let that dog out. And once they let it out, then we can start to finally talk to the dog because the dog's like, hey, you listen to me. You know what I was looking for. And I'm like, I I'm sorry it took so long, but yeah, I'm listening to you now. I see you. Now you'll listen to me. And then that dog's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you because I needed something is what the dogs are saying. I need something. That's just what I I've always seen before with seeing a, a reactive looking dog on leash. They need something. In most cases, to, to, to what I see is they're needing a human being to, to advocate for them, to tell them, hey, I got this world, it's okay, you just stay with me and everything's gonna be fine. And then that's, that works for some. But then for the others, it doesn't work. For some, giving them treats work. But for others, it doesn't. And for some, it destroys it. For some, corrections work. And others, it destroys it. And others, it makes it way, way, way worse. For some others, I'm realizing that there's just, there's, there's all the differences here. And that's the, the part with me that why I'm not going to ever be on, I only do this type of training and I'm going to excuse all the others because this one type of training isn't going to be able to help the most of all the dogs. A, uh, most of all the dogs, it's only going to help a very slim few. And that's where I, I personally see is the dog training stuff today is getting jammed up. They, that we're only, people are only in one lane. They're in this lane. And they're like, this is all that it can be. And this is all that it ever could possibly be. And if the dog doesn't align with that, destroy the dog, get, kill the dog, get, get the dog off the planet because it, it doesn't work in this right here. So for me, I'm like, nah, I, I, can't, I can't go along with that because I know that there may be a different way and a different method and something else that we can use to get this dog to be in a better place. And that's why we, we need to be able to understand that there are different options, different opinions, different ways, different things. It's not all just one way. It's not, it's not ever going to be that way on this planet ever because dogs are individual. They're not just some robots that they're just to set it and forget it. Each breed does similar things, but each dog in that breed do completely different things themselves. And that's something that we really need to understand. And, and, and if you're going to that, I'm trying this, 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 you just haven't found that thing. And today I've realized maybe we should just start with the, the play of getting the dog its desire first so that we can fulfill the dog's needs first. We can give the dog a sense of, because this dog here, it, it, it knows where its flirt pole is. It goes to the garage door and it sits there, he's like, and to him or her, it's her work at this moment. She's like, I'm gonna go to work. 
I know how to get my work going. And so she's ready to go to work. We gave this dog a purpose to do something. Chase this, man. Chase it. You get to nibble it. You get to grab it. It's even got a cute little squeaker on it. The little cheap thing I got was, it's a nice little squirrel. But uh, it, uh, it, it gives her a, a purpose. It gives her something to do, something to look forward to even, something to just stay engaged and stay focused on. Something to know that if I start to get this, I don't know what's to do, then this, this pressure starts to build up, I'm able to get that outlet out. And that's something that I, I, I don't know, but I'm going to start to play with even more, of realizing that I want to go with that first. And a lot of people might get confused. You're going to show up at my house and I have an issue with my dog that you're going you're gonna to play with it. And it's like, I need to learn more about what this dog's desires actually are before I go into trying to say no to this dog and tell it, you better sit because I said so. Because a lot of times, all you're going to do is just continue to keep on uh, 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 holding those emotions in on that dog. And you're going to keep on having to have so much pushback with that dog that the dog is just, it's, it's not fun to have to all day constantly just keep on saying no, 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 no to a dog. It's annoying. It's, it's exhausting. It's, it's not, not enjoyable in any way. And you're constantly having to fix every little thing. No. So I said, no, no, no. I said, no, no. I said, no, no. It's just, it's, it's, it's horrible life to live that way. As opposed to just allowing the dog to just get it out, get out what it, what it needs, what it desires, what it has inside of it. And then the dog's going to be more lenient to want to listen to the words that you have to say. And again, this isn't for all, but this is going to be for some people that are running into that case that you've went to the point of, because I know, I know, I know, I, I, I know. I, I've been around this stuff long enough now to hear all the different scenarios that I just think that I've categorized all the different scenarios. But uh, I've tried the treats and it's not working. I've tried the, the slip leash and it's not working. I tried the prong and e-collars, it's not working. I tried going excessive pressure with the prong and e-collars, it's not working. I tried the, I tried the this, I, you just keep trying all these things. I tried to, to, to medicate the dog and it's not working. I tried, are you trying all these different things out? And it's like, it's not working. And that's, then there's gotta be something else here that is gonna be able to get, get, get you what you're looking for. And you're gonna be able to have that aha moment. But the biggest thing is we, we, we want to be able to focus more on what is that dog's positive experience of life and start to give that to the dog as opposed to thinking that all these other things are going to be able to, to satisfy the dog as opposed to what the dog wants to do it for itself. It's like something with my great parents. The more and more I just keep on looking at him and hanging with them and seeing him, this is his jam right here to snap right next to the animals. When something tries to come around him, that he's going to try to figure out how to get him out. But that's what he just enjoys doing. He's in his just his prime of life when he could just nap there, hang out with some chicks, hang out with some goats, hang out with some cows, roam the land a little bit to be able to make sure everything out here is good to go. That's what he is just in absolute love with. So I'm going to allow him to keep doing that. And if for him, which is great because I got him because that's what he's supposed to be doing and that's what he was bred to do, he's going to continue to keep on loving his life every day for the rest of his life. He never looks at me in this, oh, I'm so sad. No, this dude, every time I go feed him and hang out with him, this dude is like so freaking happy. He's so excited because he gets to live his whole life doing what it is that he wants to do. And that's how I see my border collie the same way. This dude is just, just I, I, I just see this dude just always like, oh my goodness, this life is awesome. This world is awesome. This place is amazing because he gets to do every single day what it is that he wants to do. And it's something that is just powerful to, to give that to the dogs. And, and, and for some of us, it's just an unfortunate thing that we have a dog that, I don't even gonna say unfortunate, because there's little games that we could do to be able to replicate all of this stuff that, it, that has the internal drive that the dogs have. We're able to replicate, we're smart, it's super smart as human beings to be able to give these dogs what they need. That I don't, if I have a border collie and I don't have animals on a farm, I can recreate that, I can make that. I could get a herding ball, teach them how to move around it. I can get a flirt pull with a rabbit or, or anything on it, and I could teach them what I want with that. I can make any kind of games. I got a German Shepherd that, oh my, I got this crazy German Shepherd. I can, you can create sniff and search games all around your house. You can, you can get him to understand how to, how to be able to, to move that nose to get him to work the way that he wants to work. You can get him to understand how to be able to be a true working dog around you so that he can get that experience. And he, they, they don't need it 24 seven, just a little bit, a little bit, and, and a little bit a couple of times a week. It's not all day, every day. Certain dogs are gonna look better because you're able to give it to them all day, every day. But other dogs, if you do it all day, every day, you're gonna stress them out even more because it's just too much from the handle. And that's what it comes down to my Johnny man. It's too much. He can chase the chicks for about 10 minutes. After that, I can already see his tongue is already way hanging down. He, he, he's exhausted. Just, he's done. And then he's just, he's just got them long legs just going. He is exhausted. And he can't handle any more than that. 
And a lot of times that's why I got to lock him up when I'm doing too much out here in the backyard because he, he is exhausted. And then he starts to give me pushback because we're working too much, too hard. He's not capable of doing it. So each dog is going to be different with how much you, you have to work with them. But there's something about getting that dog. It's, it's what it wants to do and letting it do it and let it get it out. Let it get it out. There's places that we all can go to be able to get our dogs to be able to have the experience of what they want. And if not even going places, there's stuff that we could do at our houses that you got to get more creative with understanding what you're capable of doing. Because we, as, I'm telling you, these humans are so smart. We can do so much with these dogs. And, and if your dog has never even seen cows and goats and anything before, and that's what they're supposed to do, it don't, if they see it today, five years later, because I, I just worked a, with a, a border collie. She's five. She's about the same age as my boy. She's never seen goats or cows or any of this stuff. She came out here. She had no idea what to do with them. She just wanted to play fetch with a stick, man. <laughs> even if you had a dog for, for a year that's never seen it, it's, it, it doesn't matter. They're not even going to know what to do with it. So it, they don't actually really need that. They just need the interaction of us giving them a game that's going to be similar to that. And then they will finally be able to calm down because they're able to do what it is that they wanted to do. And this is something that is, is not so complicated, but it, it, it may be because it means that you now got to get up and do something as opposed to just thinking that my dog is just here. If you got a nice dog, a dog that's calm, a dog that's relaxed, a dog that's chill, you know, you don't need to worry about this unless you just want to have more fun with your dog. But if you got a dog that is just going crazy, man, that is crazy. I've seen crazy. Like crazy, crazy, flipping and, and barking at everything, lunging at everything, going wild at everything, just 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 psycho looking, man. That's just it's it's, it's insane. Then you got to figure out something to do to be able to give that dog it, an outlet so that it can get all of that away, so that it could turn into being that calm dog that you're actually looking for. And it just means that for me again, I'm just gonna say the dogs come to us for a reason, and that dog is saying to you, get up and do something. As opposed to maybe the nothing that you've been doing for the past, who knows, maybe your whole life. you just been, a, I just come home from work and I grab a beer and I sit down and I watch TV for four hours. That dog is saying to you, hey, maybe not four hours today, but you're about to give me an hour. And you're about to wait, delay that beer tonight because I want some play time right now. It's, 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 it's the world just, just motivating, moving you. So you got to do something now. You got to get up and make something happen. You don't have a choice at this moment because otherwise you're going to see things just keep on getting worse and worse and worse. And I know that's not what a lot of people want, but I'm saying if you got this dog that is just crazy, it's 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 a sign that you got to do something. You got to put in more work. You got to put in more. You got to put more effort in because that's that's that something that I've just seen is is a massive transformation. I've been working with these people now for like two or three months, and I've seen the first massive transformation from a week to a week when I just said give this flirt ball and play with her each day, like the the biggest the the most amazing transformation I've ever seen before in a dog yet, and the fastest. Because this dog, they, they, they're doing more with it. And that doing more with it has just transformed that dog's life. And, and you may not want to do that, but it's just, it is what it is at this point. You're just, you're in it. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. You just man up, woman up, child up, grown up, get up, and do it, man. You got no choice. You got to get up and do it. And that's, that's, it's like your dog is begging for you to get up and start to do something. And then when you start to do something, then you're going to start to see the success that you've always been looking and waiting and praying for. Because you're, you're, you're seeing other people's dogs and you're like, I want to be able to walk my dog, take my dog there. And it's a matter of making sure that you get up and you got to do something. And that doing something is figuring out what's going to be able to work for you. Because if everything hasn't been working, then let's try that next thing out. Because for one, I know most people don't want to give up on the dog that easily. Some people just don't give crap. The dog growled or something, they're just, they're done. It's gone. I don't, I don't want it anywhere around me. But most people aren't that way. You're, you're trying to figure it out, and you want to figure out that next step. And that's, that's someone to be able to give you another step of something different to do to be able to get you in a better place. So at first, my method is do nothing, man. Put a dog on a leash, go to places that the dog's nervous with, going crazy, and the dog just doesn't stop that after a couple of weeks. It's clearly not going to go anywhere. And if I say, okay, now use a little bit of leash pressure. If the leash pressure doesn't work and the dog is still doing it and or gets even worse, stop that, scratch that. Let's go, what, what are we going to do now? Now, I'm going to say is make sure that you are figuring out what that dog's desires are and start to fulfill that dog's needs. And then you're going to start to see a dog transform and change. And then if that doesn't work, then we got other things that we're still going to continue to keep on working on. But these things, you should see differences in, in a week's worth of times, not no five years of putting into it. Something that I have come to really realize with dogs. It doesn't take no weeks and, and months and years. If I'm not seeing something happen pretty much day by day and seeing things better in four or five or six days at a time, 
then what I'm doing, I got to do something different here because this isn't working. Because dogs are fast, man. They're fast. And it's something that we should be paying more attention to. Thank you.